Good morning and welcome to the January Total CRM Byte session. Today's session is going to be around the PCF gallery. Uh, and the PCF gallery provides a whole range of controls that can help improve your CRM with updated visuals and functionality. We have set up some controls that we'll show you today to give you a bit of a taste around what the PCF gallery can provide for you. So first of all, the PCF gallery is just a website. And as I mentioned, it's basically a collection of controls created within the Power Apps component framework. So the site lists controls created by the Power Platform community to assist others. And you can view them all at pcf.gallery. That's the URL that you would need to go to. And once you're here, you can look through all the pages of controls or you can search based off categories and, and have a look what you're looking for there. There's a whole heap of categories here. Or you could just use the search bar at the top as well. So we might do something like the, so we're looking for something to do with address fields, you can type in there and you get a whole heap of options that are available to you there as well. But I definitely recommend even just going and having a look and doing a quick scroll through and seeing if there's anything that, you know, could be implemented into your CRM or something that would help you guys out. And as you can see, there's like 21 pages worth and that number continues to grow as more and more people keep adding the controls that they make in there. So it is community based and there's actually also an ideas area where you can request potential controls um, for other people to go and create for you as well. So we're going to jump back into our CRM here. And I'm going to pull up Paul Cannon, who's going to be our main contact for today's session. So the first control I'm going to show you is a dependent option set. And we can see here that we have listed a department field, the contacts department, as well as the department role. So depending on the value that we select in the department, the options that are available us to us in the role will vary. So if we have a look here, let's say um, Paul works in admin, we then have head of Ad admin available to us in the department role. Whereas if we change it to IT, then we'll get a whole other group of options available to us as well. And it's gonna hide those values that aren't relevant to that initial option set that we have set. So quite often we see people needing a long list of options in, in their option sets. And you know they've got like a hundred options and it can be quite hard to manage. So with this control, we can really simplify the list down for you and make it a lot more manageable for the users. There are also a few other types of controls for option sets available. So if this one doesn't suit or, or it isn't quite what you're looking for, let us know and we can help point you in the right direction of some potential other options that we have for this. So I guess some other examples of uses for using this dependent option set might be the contact specialty or an accounts business type, but really there are a lot of different possibilities that you can make use of this type of control. So the next one we're going to have a look at is a many to many drop down. So when we say a many to many relationship, we're talking about two different entities. What you'll see here is when I click the interest drop down, we get a whole heap of options that are available to us to select. And it looks just like an option set, quite similar to the ones that we had before, um, but this is a multi-select option set that we have. And as it's a many-to-many -many connection that we've created, you're gonna be able to tick as many as are relevant. So at the moment, we're saying Paul's interests are art, blogging, and gaming. But let's say, let, let's add music in as well. So we've added music into the list, and you can actually see down the bottom here, a link to the other entity where we store all of our interests. 
And now that I've added music, I can actually refresh this. And it's now added music in. Likewise, if we wanted to take a couple of options off, so we're going to take art and blogging off, we could then refresh that there as well. And it's going to update the list for us. What I've done is I've created an interests entity. And we can see that under the marketing section here, we've got the list of interests available. And if I click on that, you're going to see all the options that were available in the drop down there. So this is where we, we have all the different records of saying what the interests are. And we've got all those. So next, I'm just going to go, go back to Paul Cannon there. But th this one can be helpful when you have just a, a whole group of entities. And originally, it was quite hard or, or you had to do some different roundabout ways to connect entities to each other when it's a many to many. Um, this one just allows you to do quickly ticket and, and then it, it's right there for you and you've built the connection rather than having to add them one by one down here in the in the subgrid, you'd have to do add existing interest and you do that multiple times. Now we can just do it by the drop down, tick a couple and refresh it and it's going to be right there for you. We're going to now have a look at our address tab. And here we've added the ability to use an address lookup, which allows for address autocomplete rather than typing in the whole value into all the different fields that we have here. So we've got the standard address with the streets, the city, the state, the postcode, and then the country. So we don't now don't have to add the options into all of that. So if I look in, if I use my address lookup, I'm going to use our business address. And you'll see that it even comes up with the unit number as well. Quite often what you'll see with, with some of these lookups is it will give you the business address, but it won't give you or, or the office building address, but it won't give you the unit number. So if I pick unit seven here, you're going to see it fills in on the left there. And on the right hand side, it's now updated the data to show us on Bing Maps. So the other real benefit to this is that the data is validated by real maps data. So this will include all listed Australian addresses and ensure that no junk data is being put into the address fields of your records. And you'll notice that what we can do is lock these options here of these other fields. And that way users can't manually update all these different options and instead we then drive them to update up here in the address lookup. So we could we could also, you know, if we wanted to change it and we might say, let's say it's 1008 Doncaster Road instead. Oop. Let's say we got the address wrong and this time we'll just do that and it updates there accordingly as well. And it's also shifted on our map too. This control is paired with address finder and you can go to their website it's just addressfinder.com and you can get up to 500 lookups for free per month so if you wanted to go more than 500 lookups per month you would then have to pay and then it's it's a varying price depending on how many searches you are doing per month but for free you do get the 500 available to you so for a lot of people that's that's more than enough, but depending on your use, it, it may you may require a little bit more. And as I mentioned, we've also paired this with the Bing Maps just to the right, and that will give you the visual representation of what we're looking at and what we've put in in our address section there. We're going to keep moving across the tabs and go into our Mention User tab. So here you'll be able to send a notification to another user. So let's say, for example, I may have just updated some key details for Paul Cannon and would like the sales manager to verify the data. So what I can do is just type in here. I might type, um, please review the details for me. And then I can do at 
and I'm going to do CRM admin. And then I'll save that. And then in a minute, it's going to come through and send an email to me. There we go. There's the email and we can see that it's been sent from CRM admin. That was my user. So it actually sends it from the user who's done the update and it says, please review the details for me. And then if I press click here, it's then going to open up that record that I mentioned in CRM. This can help save the time rather than sending an email saying, hey, I put data in, um, can you go look here? Uh, what it does is it automatically gives you that link to the record to try and make the process as easy as possible. So in this case, the sales manager, rather than every time someone says, hey, I've, I've updated some data, can you go look at it? And they got to scour through the system to find what they're looking for directly within the email that's automatically come through just by doing the mention. He can then just select click here. He also sees the notes of what we've asked him to look at. And easy as that, we've got the record pulled up here as well. So we'll close that out. All right, finally, we're going to move back to our summary tab and onto one of our opportunities. So I'm going to pick the CRM upgrade opportunity. And what you'll see is we've added in a Kanban view to the bottom of the screen for all the tasks that need to be completed for the opportunity. So from here, you can manage all the tasks and move them through the stages without needing to drill down into the record. So we can see here that we've got our initial workshop and currently that initial workshop is in progress. But in this example, we're going to say that I've actually now finished this workshop and I can move it across and it's now going to be completed and that will update the status of my task to be completed. Likewise, let's let's say now that we've we've done the initial workshop, our quote, we're, our creating of the quote is now currently in progress, and our story development is also being reviewed. We're, we've worked through the stories, and now we're starting to quote on that, and we're just reviewing those final details. So it's really really easy to move it back and forth and change the status of each of these tasks. But let's say for example our quote and we had our quote there and we said it was completed but they've now asked us for to review it we can actually then even though we've we've marked it off as complete initially we can then even move it back and just put it back into in progress and that's fine it's more than capable of doing that for you what you'll see on each task is some of the key details that i've elected to put here so we've got the task name so whether it's send quote, create quote, or so on, we've got, what is it linked to? So it's linked to our opportunity, the CRM upgrade. The owner of the task is CRM admin. And then when was this task created? So these are just the options that I've put on, but you have the ability to modify and put whichever fields you would like or are relevant to you and have that display on this Kanban view. We can also create new tasks directly from the Kanban view as well. So what I can do is do press new task here. It's gonna pop open my quick create. And let's just say it's going to be, let's just say it's project rollout. And that will do, we'll pop that in and I'm going to save and close that. You'll see now, that's just jumped straight into my Kanban view from here. Again, not having to go all across the system to be able to find this. We've just done it right from here in our Kanban view and did the new task. So as you can imagine, there are a lot of possibilities with this, whether it's running your agile sales methodology through your CRM, or even just providing an easy way to work with records that can make more sense visually than perhaps your standard views. And just a note, you could use other entities in the Kanban control. So 
We've decided to pick tasks just for this demo's purpose, um, as it is quite broad in scope, but you can use whatever makes sense for your business. So as you can see, the controls that I've shown today are, are really beneficial, and it's really just scratching the surface of what is available in the PCF gallery. But hopefully you've gotten a few ideas on some additions that you can add to your system. And more controls keep getting added over time. So be sure to keep checking back in to the PCF gallery to see which controls become available. If you have any more questions after the session, please feel free to send it through to support at totalcrm.com.au and we would love to help you.